Hi folks. For the past few years, we've been 3D printing a lot, but always using Prusa Slicer or Cura or whatever slicer software came with the printer. But you can 3D print and slice within Fusion 360 now. So in this video, I wanna walk through the basics of how we do that, talk about a few other tips and tricks that I think could really help you, depending on how you're using your printer. And finally, an amazing piece of technology within Fusion where we can convert an STL file back to a solid model pretty darn well. So let's dive in. Over on Thingiverse, I downloaded the STL file of this Haas Memory Aid button that goes over your Haas power button or cycle start to serve as a reminder. So to 3D print this infusion, we don't want to upload or open that file, but rather go over to insert, mesh, pick that file, and that gives us the ability to choose the unit type. In this case, and often the case, the STL files are in millimeters, click OK. Head over to manufacture. And if you're new to fusion manufacturing, the general workflow is left to right. So we'll start with a setup. I'm gonna pick my machine. We've got a Prusa MKS3. There are numerous machines that you can see here in the fusion library. Click okay. I'm gonna change the filament type to PLA, 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Arrangement is, of automatic is good, click okay and we're actually kind of done. We have a toolpath that we can simulate just like we can simulate CNC cam G code, and we could now post-process that, which is just the way of outputting the file that we put on an SD card or send over to our 3D printer. We've also got the ability to manipulate and move the model around. This is a powerful method. I don't think it's quite as easy as the place face on surface that you see in Cura and Prusa, but it certainly works. What is really cool is if we click on automatic orientation, we can start entering criteria of angles, rotation axis, and we can choose what is the most important to us in this print volume or part height, etc. Click OK. Fusion does some behind the scenes calculation. Right click orientation results, and it will give us different orientations. I do wish Autodesk would let us just index down through these automatically instead of having, having to click each time. But this is really cool. I really enjoy having the computer give me some results to choose from rather than always having to think of them on my own. And it's a little insight to why I think in the long run what Fusion offers uh, as a slicer and as a manufacturing workflow is going to look a lot different. But we'll come back to that later in the video. You can edit the print settings. These will be common to anybody who's uh, spent time modifying recipes uh, or 3D print settings. You can also change your infill with a number of various different infill patterns and settings. You can edit your supports as needed and then ultimately simulate in post. Now slicers aren't particularly complicated or hard software to learn, but when we've got new folks on the team here, new interns, uh, and I'm actually trying to have my eight and five year old kids start to 3D print on their own, and take a look at this. I think this is a fusion workflow that's going to really change and standardize uh, and make it much easier to give folks who want to 3D print but don't necessarily want to dive into all the nitty gritty details. So take a look. So we created a file called a master template 3D printing. Open that up. We've got the two printers that we own at the shop here, a Prusa MK3S and a Mini. But take a look. When I choose the Mini, a different part shows up to print. That's because if we go back to the design workspace, we have our two shop printers set up here as their own components. If I want to print something to the large printer, I activate its component, insert mesh, and insert my STL file. And I would do the same thing if I wanted to print something to the mini. I also have something I find really useful, which is this reference cube. It's just a one inch cube. It serves no purpose other than to act as a one inch reference, which usually helps tell me if I got my scale massively off like that millimeter to inch issue that we've all seen with STL files. Back in the manufacturer space, everything is already done. This is very similar to our five axis workflow that we've done a video on showing how we use a container method to really streamline our cam workflows. Well, same thing here. Our Prusa MKS3 is set up with the default of PLA. And the key part to this is the Fusion setup already has the model selected of that model back in the design workspace. So any components or bodies or STL files that I've added in the design space to this printer, it will see as things we need to 3D print. So for us, we're mostly just printing PLA right now, but 
This workflow also really extends itself to saving defaults for TPU or ASA or ABS, et cetera, so that you can find those settings and recipes that you like. And anybody that's on our Fusion team or within our shop or anywhere you're using your Fusion computer, you've got access to your latest and greatest recipe and workflow. I love that. The key to having the visibility change when you switch between your printers or setups is down at the bottom of your screen, synchronize active setup. And here I've got the sync visibility with the active setup chosen. The other great thing about this is you can save off this file as a product or project specific file name and it benefits from Fusion's infrastructure of storing all your data. So if I wanna reprint something days or weeks later, not only is it easy to find the file, but those print settings are right there with it. So usually as simple as just regenerating the code and pushing it to your printer. The other thing I would love to see, I really hope this makes a lot of progress in the coming years, is hybrid manufacturing. It exists at a pretty high level now, the six-figure, seven-figure uh, machines, but I'd love to see it at that desktop or more accessible level where you've got a machine that can both be additive and subtractive. And in those cases, you're gonna wanna mix additive tool paths with cam and other machining tool paths. And in that situation, I think Fusion is gonna have a big edge, both from a cam standpoint, but also from an integrated workflow of design, additive and subtractive tool paths in one software. And there's so many other things within Fusion that I don't even use, but I'd use them if I knew how or could, which is using FEA or simulation or generative design to help tell where you need supports or what the end result is for a how much something flexes or how strong it is. Uh, it's really cool to think about what that could be. But I wanna end this video with the coolest thing I've ever seen, uh, which is can we take an STL file and get it back to a solid model? So anyone who's ever worked with an STL file knows this is what you get. There are thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of triangles, and it's an object that doesn't have any intrinsic dimensions. You can't click on a line and measure something, and we can't do all the things we wanna do sometimes to extrude or add or delete or modify this file. There is now a way in Fusion to change this back to a solid model. It's really cool. By the way, this is a Scottish Terrier I downloaded for my daughter's kindergarten school mascot, and I wanted to delete this hole right here and then put some text across the Scotty dog. So to do this, I already imported the file by going to insert mesh. In the mesh workspace, we're first going to generate face groups. Click on the body and click OK. It may take a second to compute longer if you have a lot of triangles on your object. And then here's the magic part. Modify, convert mesh. We're gonna pick our body again. We'll leave it as parametric. And the key is prismatic. For a while, you've been able to use either Fusion, I think maybe a mesh mixer to convert this to a faceted model, but that's not what anybody wants. We want this prismatic model. Click OK, take a look at what we get. How amazing is that? This particular model missed one thing that I wanna fix though. We'll go into the surface workspace, create, patch. I'll patch this one surface that didn't get done correctly the first time and then create boundary fill. I like to pick the bodies out of the CAD tree, I find it's easier to get a consistent result, and then select cells, I'll choose select, check that box, mm -hmm. click okay. A quick clarification, we only had to patch and do that boundary fill because when we did this convert mesh, it missed that one little section. If it doesn't miss any of those, when you go through this process, you won't have to patch, you won't have to do that boundary fill. And we now have a solid model. I'm gonna hop back into the solid workspace, uncheck the visibility on the old bodies that we don't need anymore. I've got this body three visible. I can click on these faces, hit delete. That goes back to a solid. And we can do things like put text on this and extrude it. And when we click on lines, we get actual dimensions, which is absolutely awesome. And of course you can still use Fusion to do that, edit your file and send it back out as an STL file to your slicer of choice. Quick time out. This process has worked well on relatively simple shapes, but we tried doing this with some more complex organic freeform shapes and it's not there yet. If anybody knows a better tips and tricks or process, please by all means throw that in the comments below. This is really cool technology and I'm hoping more development and capability comes out of it, but it is not perfect by any means yet, certainly on every STL file out there. 
but I really am curious to see where this goes because again, when I think about letting my kids 3D print now, this is the workflow that's going to work for them and that's a really cool experience to see them click through, put it on a SD card, go down there and start the print. So as always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care. See you soon.